I'm Mark Callahan, Mr. Saltwater Tank. Most of the time when you see me on Mr. Saltwater Tank TV, it's me at home in front of my saltwater tank. But today, I'm busting out. I'm here in Orange County, California, at the Marine Aquarium Expo with a couple thousand of my closest reef junkie friends to check out some of the latest gear in the saltwater tank world. So let's hop inside and have a look at what we see. Ah yes, the Marine Aquarium Expo. Home to lots of frags, lots of fish, one cute pug, one dog that can eat that cute pug, and a couple of mermaids. Hello, ladies. Fragging is cool, but not with the mermaids, so I better talk to someone quick before I get myself into trouble. Luckily, there's a familiar face nearby. Having an auto top-off system on your tank is one of the easiest ways to get it started on the path to cruise control. I'm here with Mike from Hydor USA. This looks like a really small auto top-off system. Oh uh, yeah, this is the new Hydor Smart Level. Um, unlike traditional top-offs, that use float switches and things that get stuck. Ours is just a convenient probe that actually measures temperature difference. So, um, temperature probe? Temperature difference, yes. Okay. So there's actually three fingers. The bottom one would be your minimum water level, the middle would be your maximum, and then the top would be the alarm. Um, and then there's a control inside the probe as well. So basically, the probe measures the temperature of the water, okay. the difference, and then depending on which fingers are underwater that correspond temperature-wise, it determines whether or not it needs to turn the pump on, your top off, on or off. As okay. water evaporates, the maximum would be exposed and the minimum would be exposed, which point tells it to turn the pump on. As the pump fills, the minimum goes underwater, the max goes underwater and says turn the pump off. Okay. Uh, we have the alarm, so in case, heaven forbid, it pops off and starts floating in your tank, or a kid runs by and pulls it out the back and is draping on the back of the that tank. That happens. Where all four now read the same temperature, it says alarm, shuts everything off and starts beeping at you. So what if my tank is 78 degrees and my room is 78 degrees? The, the trick is that they actually have little heating elements in them that produce their own heat inside the finger. That way it's not purely dependent upon air temperature and water temperature. It's measuring the difference in the heated temperature and the temperature it's reading in the tank. How quick does it respond? I mean, if the max goes underwater, it's going to take a minute to change temp. About 10 seconds. 10 seconds. About 10 seconds. So low chance of overfilling. Very low, unless you've got a monster pump moving way too much water into your tank. Which pump? Is your pump? Hydor's pump? Uh, we have a lot of pumps. We right here. We're using a uh, Pico 1200. Puts about 300 gallons per hour. Okay. This is a eight gallon tank, and the auto top off responds fast enough to where I'm not flooding over the uh, interior wall. So the pump is just a plug. You can use whatever plug you want that's appropriate gallons per hour for your tank. Correct. Ah, uh, okay, got it. And then it looks like there's a brain here as well. On off switch. It's got four lights. There's a power one telling you if it's on. Okay. Then there's three LEDs here. There's blue, blue, and red. Okay. Uh, the bottom one's min, max, and alarm. And basically, if the LED is lit up, that means that that finger is underwater. Got it. Nice, easy solution, auto top off. All about making things easy. This is part of tank cruise control. I look forward to testing it out. Right. Thanks, Mike. You're welcome, Mark. Tank automation, Mark Likey. Things that can sting me? Hmm. Gotta check that one out to be sure. Most of the time when you think WYSIWYG or what you see is what you get, you think corals and sometimes fish. Remember with Greg, you said not only are we doing this with fish, but we're doing this with predator fish, lionfish of all things. Tell me the story behind this. Well, it kind of originally uh, began as an educational thing. My wife and I uh, have been keeping venomous fish for many years, and we've been trying to get the uh, some of the old bad information kind of out of out of everybody's minds and start having them see these fish in a different light. The line of fish kind of have a bad name in the industry right now. People are trying to eradicate them from the ocean, but you're actually advocating keeping them. Yes, and we do agree that the lionfish don't belong in the Atlantic or the Caribbean. Sure, sure. And we are 100% behind getting them out of those biosystems. But you know, there's plenty of ecosystems where they do belong. You said nano tanks, we're talking smaller tanks with predators in them. The dwarf lions, uh, wasp fish, uh, one of the stingfish you see, uh, those are all venomous fish, but they'll all fit in a smaller tank. What's so WYSIWYG about them? It's a fish. Well, first thing you'll see the exact fish. Um, 
The other thing is you'll kind of see how it's doing. A good, a, a healthy fish looks very healthy. So we will be conditioning the fish. Not only will we condition the fish, we will be pre-treating them so uh, they shouldn't have any parasites. And the big deal I think that's going to set us apart is that each fish will come to you already eating non-living foods, which is a huge thing that a lot of people have trouble with. While we're talking about livestock, let's go look at some equipment that grows tiny livestock that I love. Cad Lights make some slick and innovative aquarium gear, such as the pipeless skimmer and the conic biopellet reactor. Now they're bumping it up a notch. They made a big brother to the conic biopellet reactor. They're calling, well, the big biopellet reactor for now, but here's what's different about it. It holds 2,200 milliliters worth of biopellet media. So it's rated for tanks up to 1,500 gallons. These are big boys. Unlike the smaller version of the conic reactor, the Big Brother is not adjustable for the speed flow, and it's also not recirculating. Now, Cadlight says this isn't a problem. If you fill this thing up with media, you're going to need all that flow. So if you've got a big tank, you want to run bio pellets with good even tumble, check out the Cadlight's large version of their conic bio pellet reactor. Everything at max 2013 looked great. But what happens if disaster strikes with your tank while you aren't at home? No sweat, I found a solution for you. At some point in your saltwater tank career, you're gonna have a tank emergency. And the most likely tank emergency you're gonna encounter is a power outage. I'm here with Mark to show me a unique filtration for when the power goes out. What am I looking at with this thing? Well, Mark, this is a canister style filter that you can hang on the tank and it's battery powered. Uh, up until now, the only thing you could do during a, a, a power outage is use an air bubbler or a generator. Or a battery backup for or a pump. Or a battery backup for a pump. Okay. Uh, what I'm offering is a battery backup, a uh, battery powered pump with a canister filter, or this could be placed in a sump for a saltwater aquarium. Uh, it will automatically start if the power goes out and can last up to eight days. Eight days? Eight days on a, eight on days. a sealed lead acid battery. You have a battery that's powering a pump, it's pumping it to your filter media. The canister will hold whatever filter media you, you, you want, okay. uh, depending on the uh, aquatic life that you have. So you have m full multi-stage filtration with my unit during a power outage. So I gotta say, I'm not gonna have this sitting in my tank at all times waiting for the power to go out. It would not be in your, your tank while you're home. Uh, if you're home, if you have a power emergency, the lights go out, you, you just drop this into the tank and you plug it into the battery. Or when you go out of town, this sits in there. Exactly, and nobody's home watching the tank. Is it running again. continuously? No, it's not. The power is on right now, and what's happening is the pump is off, it's but on. the battery is charging. So okay. when you go on vacation, battery's charging, pump is off, power goes out, pump goes on, battery is now powering this pump. So this is sitting in your tank waiting for the power to go out exactly. and then it turns on. In your tank, or there's a sump version, which could be sitting in your sump. And in your sump, you would just have a tube hanging over the, the tank. Okay. And then when the power goes out, it will start the pumping water through your, your sump into the tank. And the overflow will continue. So there's two models. Uh, this particular model comes apart and gets reassembled uh, with the mount. It converts to a sump version as well. Easy way to give yourself some peace of mind. Plop it in your tank when you go out of town. It's going to keep water circulating and give you filtration. Right. It gives you a solution better than a bubbler. Uh, not as good as a generator, but it's much less expensive. And most of the people that have generators don't have them tied into the house. Right. So when they go on vacation, the generator doesn't automatically kick on. Somebody's they have so Somebody has to go there and turn it on, Got whereas it. this will go on automatically. I need one of these in my backup arsenal. Thanks for showing okay, it to me, Okay, thank you. Thank you. More good gear? Another great year for the Marine Aquarium Expo. If you want to get in on all the action at the Marine Aquarium Expo in 2014, be right here at the Orange County Fairgrounds, April 5th and 6th, 2014. I'm Mark Kelly and Mr. Saltwater Tank. This has been Mr. Saltwater Tank TV. Till next time, have a good one. Enjoy your tanks and know your tank personality.